All right, we are here with the Wave Podcast. Uh, we got Luke and Wellington. We got Wellington, and um, we got my sister Aubrey Holly, um, who is a doctor, um, PhD in protein science, and she also is an ex um, college athlete. Ran the fastest um, fifteen hundred in the country as a freshman, four nineteen. Um, so she's got some world class speed, <laughs> and we've also got. Um, Two other ex-college athletes. Wellington played college baseball. I played college football, ran a little college track. So we all got the athletes. And today is a little bit more of maybe a technical podcast. We are going to talk a little bit about Aubrey's testimony and Wellington's testimony in sports. Um, But we're going to be talking about how mental health and our our physical bodies, especially our gut, are um, connected. And so hopefully you're ready for a little bit of a science lesson from um, the doctor today. But uh, so Aubrey, just a little bit with that intro, um, you know, you were um, a good athlete from the time we were little. And I remember you beating all the boys in um, the different races and stuff. And so being gifted young in sports, how did that affect your identity um, and just who you were, you know, growing up and even into college? Yeah, so growing up in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, a small town, yep. it did. I mean, being successful not only as a track athlete, but just being a competitor in general. I mean, yeah. my favorite movies like Rocky, yeah. One, Two, Three, Four, Five, yeah. like, you know, the motivation, the go getter, the underdog, and trying to be the best. And I think yeah. if that was in track or almost anything else I really did, it was kind of trying to find that success and approval. Of, of being good and doing things the right way. Mm-hmm. Um, and that comes with, with some pressure. And I think, um, you know, as a young kid, we're talking a little bit about, you know, anxiety, depression, and a little bit of my story has to deal even with eating disorders. Mm-hmm. Um, but starting even as a young, I was 10 years old when I ran my first national race um, mm-hmm. in the 1500. And I remember preparing for that when no one had ever told me anything about body weight and racing, I remember weighing myself and then waiting to eat breakfast until well, skipping breakfast, skipping breakfast, waiting mm-hmm. to eat till noon and reading um, nutrition facts labels of ramen noodles <laughs> <laughs> and thinking like, wow, that's a lot of calories. And I'm 10. No mm. one's ever told me that. Um, mm-hmm. But just the basis of seeing performance and every little thing that can matter mm-hmm. to me, even though no one introduced it to me, um, it was yeah. almost innate in the athlete track culture. Yeah, as, yeah. As a young little yep. ten year old girl. Yeah. Well, and it's crazy too. I feel like with most people, the root of their anxiousness or depression a lot of time is perfectionism. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be sports related, but mm-hmm. you know, it can be you know wanting to get a husband or wife and trying to look yeah. perfect or whatever it is. But that perfectionism is wired into us. Mm-hmm. I think as people, you know, and we feed that, it can be pretty pretty deadly and um wellington i know you've been playing baseball a long time and what how did how did that affect you as far as you know being in um puerto rico and um god you know kind of using baseball as a as just a way of opportunity and you know to get out of the environment you were in um so yeah how did that impact you of of the role baseball has played in your life baseball wow I started late. I was like 14, 13 years old. Mm. That's late. So late. Yeah, so late. <laughs> right. Like For baseball, though. Yeah, yeah. No, for real. Like, everybody that I know, they start five, yeah. six, seven. So they, to me, they had that advantage uh, because they've been playing for such a long time. But I was gifted to be athlete, you know, athletic, you know, good genetics. And that was kind of like a advantage on me. In baseball, you have to throw hard or hit hard or run hard. One of those. So I think throwing hard came me, you know. God came me, but, you know, that gifting of throwing hard came me and going anywhere. But it can be frustrating, you know, because you're trying, to, you're trying to do good every time. And sometimes you can forget how I enjoy the game and, and, and probably damage yourself and, you know, mental health, anxiety, depression. Because when you have a bad game, you know, you coach, yeah. yell at you, something like that. Nobody want to do bad, right. you know. So... I mean, I almost quit in college because of sports, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. I remember my sophomore year. Uh, I mean, it's not it's, it's not against coaches, but sometimes they don't let players be there themselves. Right. You know, they're trying to change the player the way they play, the way they are. To me, just work around their player, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. Don't try to change who they are. Uh, and that's something I really learned. Uh, 
and one thing you know uh, that can compare you know with the spiritual part you know when you gift it it probably be easy you know uh, for you to play sports mm -hmm. i mean if you compare like track and baseball it's they really different sports because in track you have to worry about your weight yeah you have to worry about how much you eat you probably have to be careful you know you don't want to overtrain because mm -hmm. you don't want to pull you know hamstring and all that you depend on your legs right most of the time baseball players you just need to get stronger you need to eat more like football <laughs> yeah you yeah. Know? yeah 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 uh, sl sleep is everywhere but i think it's, it's in both sides it's just discipline and and, and it can be hard you know mm -hmm. uh, i always wanted to run track if i couldn't uh but to me you know uh, when, whenever i try it and i got i, I start running i got so tired i'd be like wow like yeah. how they do it yeah you know and Yesterday, you know, I went to the gym and the Holy Spirit is like comparing, you know, your spiritual life and working out. It's the same thing. Like, don't expect to get stronger in your physical if you don't go to the gym. Yeah. So, don't expect to get stronger in your spiritual life if you don't yeah. spend time with God, you know. Right, so that's, right. that's something I've been learning. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, it's cool how, I mean, even, you know, the Apostle Paul kind of used that sports analogy um, mm -hmm. for our faith. And, you know, Aubrey, I know, like you mentioned, struggling with some of the, you know, eating stuff just even as a little kid. And um, I remember the high school like cheat days or cheat mm -hmm. weeks you know is like you would um and i would do them with you but then i always did it and yeah. so i always i always ate donuts but <laughs> i remember like that um and never really thinking anything of mm -hmm. it but just that like obsessive eating or obsessive discipline and then it's like just eating a ton and it doesn't really matter and mm -hmm. you know going to college and like wellington touched on coach issues yeah. you know and just um i think a lot of people experience it but i think guys in football and baseball, it's a little different, you know, but in, mm -hmm. I think the women's athletics, especially track, I mean, so much of that becomes, you know, abusive and manipulative mm -hmm. yeah. and I mean, just horrible, horrible for mental health. And I know that was like, I mean, really the majority of the girls mm -hmm. on your team. And so yeah. what did that look like of going from high school, then getting to college? Um, and how did, you know, running into kind of a deeper struggle mm -hmm. with the eating and mental health and, you know, how did that kind of end up leading you to Christ and what you're yeah. doing now? Yeah, definitely. So in high school, things were a little bit different. Um, track was not a three season sport as it is in college. So what I did in high school is I kind of weight cycled like a wrestler. I would gain weight in the winter and kind of eat whatever I wanted, which was my, which was my mental health break. Yeah. You know, it was like, okay, I don't have to worry about this. Uh -huh. And then I would cut 10 to 15 pounds before state and national Mm -hmm. And it just what I did from freshman year through my senior year in high school, it was, okay, I have my time to relax. This is my mental health time. Yeah. And then I would, you know, cut weight at the very end. Well, I get to college and you're expected to be at that high caliber ability yeah. and, and weight status and body composition basically all year round. So you have indoor track, outdoor track, and cross country. And mm -hmm. so my first season at Florida State, um, I had a, a very good cross-country season. Almost every single one of my teammates is a professional athlete or an yeah. ex-professional athlete um, or Olympian. So mm -hmm. very high caliber girls. And I cut weight to a much lower weight than I had ever been, um, performed very well at nationals. And after that time, um, I realized that I just had deprived my body and I was mentally exhausted. And mm. I ran into binge eating where mm -hmm. I would just eat so much because I had, you know, when I was in season, I wouldn't even eat an apple if it was outside my calorie limit. Mm. So if I was like, I'm trying yeah. to eat 1,500 calories or 1,400 calories training 60 miles a week. Yeah. I was like, I can't have an extra apple because that's too much. Yeah. So I was so strict and I'd wake up hungry. So I finished this season and I was, my body was starving and I would binge eat to the point of even driving to like fast food restaurants at night because mm. I wouldn't keep anything in my house and mm. just ordering at different fast food restaurants because I didn't want people to think I was eating too much. So I go mm. to like three different restaurants mm. um, mm -hmm. and then eat it all. Yeah. And it was crazy and no one knew about it. Mm. And I would just feel so sick um, mm. and I wouldn't throw up. I didn't struggle with bulimia. Mm. Um, it was just this binge eating disorder thinking this, I'm not doing this again. They do it one more time. Yeah. And, and that's it. And I kind of, I ran into some injuries, obviously doing that, <laughs> yeah. having that cycling of restriction and binging. Yep. And, um, 
I struggled going to class because of kind of feeling that depression and getting there, yeah. but it was hard. And then I had, again, problems with coaches who are already putting so much pressure on weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, my coach at Florida State, kind of went off the deep end. Right. I was having injury issues. And so I thought what would fix my problem wasn't necessarily going to God, was transferring schools. Mm-hmm. So that was my outlet. Like, okay, I just need a change of schools. That's what I need to get myself a reset. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really have any, um, like, I didn't really become closer to God, honestly, at Florida State. It was mm. a more of, I need to try harder. Yeah. I just keep making mistakes. This is kind of on me. And this yeah. reset transferring to the University of Arkansas, this is going to fix my problems. Mm-hmm. So I get to Arkansas and I'm healthy at the beginning. And then the old habits start to come back because I'm mm-hmm. trying to cut weight. The coach is giving pressure on cutting weight. So I'm cutting weight as fast as I can. And pretty soon those old tendencies of binge eating and, and I wasn't able to sleep at night because all I could think about was food. Yeah. And um, and then it got to the point where I went back to going to the fast food joints at night. Uh-huh. And I couldn't stop. Mm. I just couldn't stop doing it. And I couldn't stop eating a lot of food. Mm. Um, And I remember at that point calling my parents and telling them, like, I feel like a drug addict. Like, I can't stop eating. And I'm going to be on my 500-pound line before I know it. Yeah. You know? Um, And I just couldn't do it. So I went home, kind of had a recovery period. But these tendencies just didn't really stop. Till Mm. finally, I was like, you know, sports had been my god for a really long time. And I was injured. I fractured my femur twice. Mm. Um, And at that point, I was like, I need to step away from sports. I need to quit the track team and Mm. I need to surrender my life to God. And I remember specifically, and this is where, you know, as a young kid, I was someone, you know, who said the prayer. We were in a good Christian family, but it was more like God gave me this gift of running and I have done everything else. I worked hard. I made the sacrifices. Everything else is because of me, Mm -hmm. even though he gave me this gift. And it came down to the point of, I cannot do this yeah. anymore. Mm-hmm. I absolutely can't. And I surrendered my life to Christ on this little playground outside my old <laughs> apartment um, with this mm-hmm. little girl who was so cute. It was like this little angel. Yeah. <laughs> that sent. She was just so cute and so comforting. And it was mm-hmm. just, you know, like, I love you, Lord, and, and I don't need athletics. And what mm-hmm. it specifically makes me think of um, is Judges 7, which mm-hmm. um, mom would talk about a lot, yeah. you know, thinking, how are we going to get you down to your 300 men? Mm-hmm. Um, and correct me if I'm missing anything here. No. But um, so Gideon's leading the Israelites. Um, God's chosen Gideon to lead the Israelites to um, take over the Midianites. Mm-hmm. And they start off with like over 30,000 men. Mm-hmm. And God basically says, like, if... I let you take over the Midianites, your people are going to say, my own power has saved me. Mm. And how many times have I gone through my track career of my own power has gotten me here? Yeah. So there's 30,000 men. Basically, God says, okay, anyone who wants to go home, they're afraid, send them, send them back. Mm-hmm. So they lose like 20,000 of them, 22,000 of them go home. Mm-hmm. So there's still 10,000 men. Mm-hmm. And God said, still, if I let you take over the Midianites... Your people are going to say, my power Mm. has saved me. So he goes, takes them to the water. Gideon takes them to the water. And any man tells them to drink. And any man who laps like a dog, Mm. uh, they have to stay. Which is also great. So it's like your least trained, your least intellectual soldiers Uh. are the ones you're fighting with. Which Mm. ends up only being 300 men. Mm. And then God gives over the Midianites to Israel. And I felt like that was me. It was like God had to strip everything away from me Mm. when I could really realize I have nothing left to give. (laughs) And any like success or positive outcomes that come from my life are not because I've tried so hard or Mm. I have these abilities. It's truly God's power. Um with his mercies using me, um, for his work. Yeah. Amen. No, I mean, that's, that's really powerful. And I just think of, you know, when you even look at, um, like you said, feeling like a drug addict, yeah. uh, like with the food and stuff. And it is crazy of whether it's food addictions, drug addictions, sex addictions, like they all work the same, mm-hmm. you know, and you build that 
pathway in your yeah. brain that just it's like um you know and you're going to talk about this a little later but you know the synapses in your brain mm-hmm. that basically are like you know the railroad system in your brain they're carrying yeah. all your information and the more you use them mm-hmm. the more ingrained they get and the less you use them the more deteriorate they yeah. get you know and like for you starting at 10 years old like mm-hmm. you were building those mm-hmm. slowly and surely and pretty soon it's like you had the whole subway system yeah. railroad system <laughs> highways exactly. built you know for one specific purpose and that was to run fast mm-hmm. you know and and your body was prioritizing that over your own survival almost Mm -hmm. you know and that's what's crazy is when we do develop those addictive pathways we do feel crazy and we do want to isolate because in one way it's crazy but in the other way it's normal you Mm -hmm. know and that's where like people need to realize you're not alone in doing that but also you don't have to keep doing that yeah but you also do need to reach out like you did you know and Mm -hmm. come to that point of total surrender because your addiction isn't going to meet you halfway no you know it's it's got to be that total total surrender and i think that's what's so key within mental health and with addiction with with what i've seen is we've got to get to that point where it's like I'm going to lose my life for Christ. You yeah. know, Jesus says, whoever desires to save his life would lose it. Mm-hmm. Whoever would lose his life for my sake would save it. And so, yeah, I just think that that's a very powerful, powerful story and just how God does bring that renewing of our mind and renewing mm-hmm. our heart. But it did end up at the time costing you kind of everything. Mm-hmm. And that's what I, um, I, the people I meet with, with um, addictions or anxiety, depression, one thing I encourage them to do that I learned from Steve was writing down um, everything that stresses you out or produces anxiety in your life. And then from that list, you write down what things can I get rid of, mm-hmm. what things can I change, and what things do I have to just accept, yeah. you know, and give to God. And, you know, not very many people in your shoes would have said sports is something I can get rid of. Yeah. You know, whenever I ask people, what are the things in your life you can get rid of? They're like, well, I, I don't know. Like, there's nothing. And I'm like, well, there's nothing you want to get rid of, <laughs> but there are things you can get rid of, you know? Yeah. And for you, I mean, that was the number yeah. one priority. And I know for me, um, I mean, I didn't preach or teach for, I mean, three or four months, you know, or even maybe longer than that. I mean, not on a consistent basis. I took about an eight month break, yeah. you know, and that wasn't something I ever felt like I could just give up. I have to preach the gospel, you know, it's what yeah. God's called me to do. And, but I did have to, you know, in order for my brain, you know, to recover and stuff. And so I think addictions are such a deep interwoven, you know, problem. And especially I think with women in our culture of eating disorders is mm-hmm. such a common thing, especially, I mean, I don't know the actual numbers, but I would guess probably eight out of 10 women, um, if not almost 10 out of 10 women who are struggling with anxiety and or depression struggle with some sort of eating disorder, whether mm-hmm. it's been diagnosed or not, mm-hmm. you know, it's like that, that is a very common thing for women to go to food, you yeah. know, for comfort, even if it's not a performance thing, like mm-hmm. for you is more performance, but whether it's performance, how you look or just straight up mm-hmm. comfort. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, food is it, and it is a drug. I mean, it's, it's just as powerful. And so, and you can't get rid of it. Yeah. You can't you can't abstain from food. And that's what makes it unique. You can abstain from drugs, alcohol. You can't abstain from food. Yep. It has to be a part of your life to survive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is like a whole different dynamic, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And even I mean that even kind of ties into what we talked about last episode of um some of the same sex attraction or sexual addiction, those things. It's like mm-hmm. that's something God's created for good mm-hmm. and that can't just totally get thrown out either. Yeah. You know, and so there's drugs in some ways are the easier one yeah. because it's like, well, I'm just not gonna go to the bar or I'm yeah. just not going to go to the crack house you know you can you can cut those things out but um you can't just say i'm not going to eat food yeah or i'm never going to see anyone of the opposite sex again (laughs) i mean you're god has to do that inner healing yes you know for that to happen but uh what about for you wellington i know you've been thinking about some things over there but uh yeah i was thinking about like when you turn that to like a spiritual way like when you're gifted spiritually you know, uh, I feel like it can be hard because, especially like a young age, you, I, you, I see kids like prophesy when they're little or like mm. preaching. And I feel like sometimes, like she said, you can get overwhelmed when thinking that's you. Like, that's my gift. Yeah. That's me doing, that's me like uh, yeah. healing people. That's me praying over these people. Yep. And I feel like sometimes uh, doing too much of something can damage you. Even reading your bible even you know yeah. fasting even doing something for god uh i think god wants you to have a balance in your life absolutely you know you need to eat we need to eat uh but if you eat too much you're gonna get mm-hmm. fat yeah if you eat too little you're probably gonna get skinny so my question is like how you compare cutting and bulky 
in the spiritual life? Mm. For you all. Yeah. Well, you know, for me, I was just thinking about that too, Wellington, of, you know, one thing that I found in my journey of anxiety and depression was in the same way kind of Aubrey was with track, you know, I was getting spiritually and a very, very disciplined, very extreme and on the outside looking in, just like with Aubrey with running, people are complimenting you. You know, people are like, man, this is awesome, you know. And I remember, you know, when I realized there was something like wrong with me, well, there's a couple things. But one specific time was we were driving the car and my brain was always thinking. And I was always thinking about something like important, something intense. And um, we're driving the car. I can't remember what I was thinking about at the time, but it was like kind of getting me fired up. And I look over and Sarah's just looking out the window and looks all calm. And I said, you know, Sarah, what are you thinking about? And she said, nothing. <laughs> and I was like, nothing. Like I, and I just thought, I was like, when was the last time I thought about nothing? Never. I mean, it's like, I was never not thinking about something like important, something intense. Um, and that is kind of that like cutting bulking mentality of, you know, it was just like, I, you know, would fast, I would pray, I would read my Bible and, I remember when I started meeting with Steve and just when I was even asked, like, what do I do for fun? It's like, well, I read my Bible and I pray and I, if I have extra time, I evangelize and then I'll do some discipleship. And if there's a little time left over, you know, me and Sarah will pray together. You know, it was like, <laughs> there was literally nothing I was doing uh, that wasn't quote unquote spiritual. And I just remember I kind of had an epiphany of like, I couldn't even watch a football game and not feel like I was like in idolatry. You know, it was just like even watching a football game made me anxious because I was in this inner turmoil of like, should I be watching football or should I be praying? You know, and it's like, man, I can't even enjoy a football game with a friend because I like, is this like holy or not? You know, and then it just hit me one night when I had my body had totally gone into crash mode. Um, and I was listening to Chronicles of Narnia on an audio book and I was like, it was a story that wasn't too intense, but interesting enough that it could kind of help my brain relax before I went to bed. And I just would like thank God for C.S. Lewis. I was just like, hey, like I can thank God for this book that, I mean, I know there's spiritual principles, but it's not directly the Bible. And I can thank God for giving me something to enjoy that isn't like directly, um, yeah, spiritual or looks intense, you know? And it, like you said, that balance was so important that I was always like, um, yeah, on that extreme of everything, everything spiritual. But then it's like there was some days where it's like I was so worn out. It's like I'd sleep all day, you know, and it was just like that quote unquote bulking of like instead of binging food, it was like I remember one day I got, I mean, I had preached on, I'd done evangelism Saturday. We I preached a couple services Sunday. We had our discipleship stuff Monday. I drove down to Denver from Fort Collins Tuesday to preach at a house church, got back at like, you know, one in the morning. And I was, my brain, I, I thought I was losing it. I mean, my head hurt so bad and I was seeing spots on the way home. Like it was just like my body was shutting down. And I, I literally, I think slept for like two days. And like, I mean that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I didn't do anything. It was like, I slept and when I wake up, I try to go for a walk and I'd feel like I was going to faint. I mean, it was just like, my body was like screaming at me, you know, don't, you got to stop. But it was that same. And again, it's like, I, but then you and I felt guilty about that. It's like, oh, I'm just sleeping all day. You know, I need to be doing something more productive. So anyways, I mean, that's what comes to mind, you know, for me of like experiencing that, you know, spiritual, yeah, craziness. Mm -hmm. But, um, with that to be said, I know something that one reason I was excited about Aubrey coming on is in the midst of what I just got kind of done explaining with my anxiety, depression, and um, a lot of it was just getting too, I think, hyper spiritual and not understanding, you know, the grace of God and that God has created a lot of things for us to enjoy, mm -hmm. you know, that is a balance of everything. I mean, Paul says, whether you eat or whether you drink, whatever you do, do to the glory of God. And so I started to find more joy and carving my chest set up there or mm -hmm. doing boxing or doing different things. I was like, man, God's given us this stuff to enjoy. And, and that's a good thing. But in the midst of all of this, one thing that was really hard for me was eating, mm -hmm. not in the same way you're talking about, but I became quote unquote allergic to every food on the planet, you know, while I was going through anxiety and depression. And if you talk with people who are anxious and depressed, that's the, they'll have, all have that in common. They're um, food sensitive or 
allergic to all these foods when in reality they're not Mm -hmm. um but it's your when you're going through that fight or flight cycle your body is you know protecting basically your vital organs Mm -hmm. and your gut isn't your body doesn't consider that a vital organ and so you know your body is dumping that acid into your stomach and over time like it can really i mean stress is horrible for your stomach and we'll talk about that in a second but it's like your body gets so worn down your ability to digest food starts to be hindered and so anything that isn't super easily digested bothers you you know and so for me you know i i was down to eggs and chicken and broccoli you know it's like that's like all i could eat and um it was super discouraging you know because food is something that god's created for us to enjoy but it was like i just ate purely for fuel you know and i got done playing football at about 188 pounds and um I was, you know, this had been in the course of, you know, five or six years, but I was down to 143 pounds, you know, I mean, I lost 40 pounds over this, this time frame, and I couldn't keep it on. I mean, I kept, I realized it was a problem when I hit about 150, but it's like, I could not, no matter what I did, Mm -hmm. but it was all that stress, all that anxiety, and just, I think the spiritual element that was just crushing me. And so when we talk about anxiety and depression, I think one of my biggest encouragements for people I'm meeting with is eating a a healthy, well-balanced diet Mm -hmm. and is working on gut health um, and kind of switching gears a little bit from the spiritual to the practical because God is practical and he's designed our bodies, you know, for a purpose. And so um, my question is, is there a connection between the gut and the brain um, and mental health? And if there is, you know, how would you explain that to um, people who aren't doctors, um, but yeah, I know you still got to use some scientific terms yes. and that kind of thing. Yes, but yes, there is a strong connection between the gut and brain that has been solidified in the science. And really the microbiome gut-brain access research is relatively a new field compared mm. to other mm-hmm. nutritional sciences. Yeah. Um, and so first kind of what is the gut microbiome? I think we hear people throwing that out that kind of term out oh the gut microbiome you yeah know? but like what well, is and real quick with that it's like the amount of people i've talked to that act like they're experts on this yes. is a ton but then it's like yes. when you look at the actual kind of fruit in their life of yeah. getting healthier it's just like not there you know exactly. exactly so anyways i think this is if you feel like you're an expert on this maybe you are but just listen in and see if see if there could be some helpful things. Yes, and on a side note on that, if you're getting information from someone who's not an expert, I have my ba- just yeah. quick background. I have my bachelor's in human nutrition and dietetics. Um, then I have my PhD in food science with a concentration in human nutrition, where I studied protein extensively and omega three fatty acids on um, regulating aging and specifically looking at muscle and how muscle is one of the underlying physiological factors that mm. promote a a healthy life and influence anxiety, depression, mood, and sleep. Um, And then through my PhD, you take a lot of courses that are deep dive into nutrition. So you kind of get a big overview of all nutrition courses. And then now I teach at the University of Arkansas as an instructor, and I teach um, basic levels of fundamentals of nutrition all the way to senior level classes and graduate level classes that look at research methodology and nutrition and kind Mm. of what the latest upcoming research is. Yeah. But... One of the things we really talk about in my classes is that there are so many, no offense, quacks out there yeah. who are pretending to know about nutrition and they have a degree in business, nothing against mm. business, but right. they have no business just because they took an online course for six months right. doesn't mean they can tell you about nutrition. And a lot of times they'll do more harm and good than mm-hmm. good. A key sign if someone doesn't know what they're talking about, if they get some like wild eyes and they say like, this food is so bad and I have the key, I have the one thing you need to improve your health and all you have to do is follow what I do and buy my supplement. (laughs) Yeah, right, right. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're looking at red flags, but I know nutrition information is so confusing, so I'll try to break it down um, a little bit today. Well, and no, and you know, coming from Colorado, because we're in Nebraska now, but yes. in Colorado, it is a health um, dome. You know, everybody yeah. wants to be healthy. And that's what, you know, kind of opened up my eyes to some of this. And I think what's been interesting in this is like, and then you'll hit on it, but like getting to the basics of things that are, you know, a little bit more natural, less processed. Yes. I mean, there's some things that are, you know, practical that are going to go a long ways. But I just think to build on that point, it's like, are there some great 
preachers on YouTube that yes. have never been to seminary? Sure, there are. But are there a lot of harmful ones? There's a ton. And I've just grown in my appreciation for men who have studied the Bible a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, for me, you know, I, I've i put probably on average like a year or two a day for eight years into yeah. studying the Bible. And so it's like, do I know everything about it? No, but I know a lot more than I did five years ago. Yes. And some of the things I was so convinced on five years ago over time of study, you find it isn't true. And so I do think there's just, we can discredit the establishment sometimes. Yeah. And yeah, can the establishment mess up? Yes. Sure. Yes. You know, are there people who aren't in the establishment that are helpful? Sure. Mm -hmm. But I think like as a rule of thumb, like you're saying, it's so important to look at, you know, who am I, who am I listening to? What's the fruit of their life? Yeah. And why do they supposedly know what they know? Exactly. And at least ask yourself those questions because yes. whether it's spiritual or physical, yes. um, we live in a time of, you know, we want people, we want to hear what we want to hear, you know? And exactly. I know for me and my journey, I mean, oh man, I don't know how many, well, you remember, I mean, how many different things I was trying because oh, you're desperate. Yeah. It's like anything that's going to help me. And I, there were some people I was listening to that were well-meaning and they believed in yes. what they believed in. They weren't trying to trick me, yeah. but they were wrong. Mm -hmm. They were just wrong. Exactly. And I wasted a lot of time and a lot of money listening to people who were wrong. Yeah. Um, and again, I went to, I think what, sorry, I'll, I'll be done and no. let the expert talk, but I think one thing to consider too, if you're going through this stuff is doctors are busy. And yes. that's one thing I ran into that was frustrating is within the medical field, people can just, they, they want to get you out the door. They want to get you on a medication. And mm -hmm. as Aubrey kind of exp explains that stuff, that's not necessarily, you know, what we're talking mm -hmm. about, but it is, there has to be relationship there. But if you're patient, you can find someone who's an expert and yeah. provides relationship. And that's what you need to look for is just because you've had one bad experience with a doctor or mm -hmm. one bad experience with someone from seminary yes. doesn't discredit everybody. And it's just, there's bad people in every field, but to really, to really evaluate, you know, find someone who you can build a relationship with mm -hmm. who actually does care about you and is an expert. And it's possible. It is possible, yes. And there's one more quick point on that as well. I always date, I always say, you know, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, mm -hmm. especially for nutrition. Not one study, one person says this because yeah. almost always they're wrong. And I have a prime example of a friend who was dead set that protein was harmful to their body. Mm -hmm. And they sent me an article to prove to me because I studied protein in the health benefits that protein is harmful and it was from a vegan a vegan website and the title said protein causes cancer mm. so if you actually read the article like someone who's actually wanting to know what the information is reading beyond the title what happened in this study it was in rats and the protein group lived the non-protein group died <laughs> So oh, the non-protein wow. group was killed by these toxins. So toxins were introduced into both of these mice. The one group died because of a lack of protein. The other group survived but developed cancer. Oh. So this yeah. vegan website is promoting protein causes cancer. Well, the lack of protein you killed them. death. Yeah, yeah. So it's also, it's so sad because yeah. you shouldn't, you wouldn't think people are out there trying to trick you, but unfortunately people are out there trying to trick you to make money. Yeah. So yeah. just being very careful, care, careful, always looking at the site that you're reading. If it's vegans.com, probably not the best site. If it's yeah. carnivores.com, yeah. <laughs> probably not the vet, best site. Yeah. And so just looking at that reliability is very important. Yeah, no, absolutely. So back to yes. the gut, gut brain connection. Yes. Okay, so the gut-brain connection. So first, what is the gut microbiome? So basically, we have these trillions of microorganisms that live in our gut. And this is going to be anything from bacteria to archaea to viruses to fungi, all these different types of microorganisms. And we think gut, typically I think people are thinking colon area, but really the gastrointestinal tract is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So that's everything from the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, out the anus, right? Yeah. This long tube, that's our gut. Mm. And we look at these different microorganisms that live throughout our gut, it's different. So the mouth, the stomach, the small intestine, large intestine, it's all different. And that's dictated a lot by your pH because the pH is going to determine what types of microbes can survive and what cannot. Mm. You know, so mm -hmm. microbes that can survive in a very low pH, that's going to be the stomach. 
because it's a very acidic or a more basic pH, that's going to be in the um, small intestine or colon. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at this gut-brain axis, that's basically, in essence, just saying, how does the gastrointestinal tract affect and communicate with your brain? Like, yeah. how does that happen? Mm -hmm. um, and when you look at the literature, there's kind of these three primary pathways that our gut communicates with our brain. Mm -hmm. So one that I find very interesting is that our gut can actually synthesize and manufacture neurotransmitters. Oh, wow. So serotonin, um, and serotonin is going to be kind of your more feel-good hormone, kind of your happy hormone. Uh, dopamine, that's going to be your motivation. Like that dopamine hit, you did something great, you were successful, you accomplished a task. It can increase dopamine synthesis. Mm. And also GABA. And GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Mm -hmm. And that's been shown to help with anxiety and depression right. um, levels. So that's yeah. kind of the one uh, way. The second way is through immune signals. Mm. So through immune signals, a lot of things are going to affect this kind of anti-inflammatory or pro-inflammatory process within our right. body. Um, a big one you'll hear about are these like cytokines, and cytokines are basically protein signaling molecules mm. that act on other organs or other parts on the body. Mm -hmm. So these can act directly on the brain, and sometimes they'll see by lowering, in, lowering infl inflammation, that can actually improve the effectiveness of SSRIs right. and drugs like that because inflammation can interfere with the affinity and the ability of the neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine to bind to the receptor in the brain. Which, that you know, and that was 100% true for me, you know, of when I, anytime there was inflammation in my body, even getting sick and different things, yeah. um, my depression, anxiety would get way worse. And, yes. you know, then even I, I don't know this as, again, an expert scientist, mm -hmm. but I even felt like that's why I was so sensitive to gluten for a while because mm -hmm. gluten does produce some mm -hmm. inflammation in your body as you digest it, but it's not that much. Mm -hmm. But if your body is already basically like over the edge of that stress you can handle, mm -hmm. just a little bit of inflammation, yeah. you know, would bother me. And now that that inflammation has been down mm -hmm. and, you know, I did go on the SSRI and mm -hmm. started to have that healing in my body. Um, all of a sudden it's like, I can eat those foods. So anyways, yeah. I mean, I know for me, inflammation was a direct, which is why things like, you know, Benadryl, mm -hmm. um, people take Benadryl when they're struggling with anxiety. Mm -hmm. It's that, you know, antihistamine yeah. that like puts, uh, takes down some of that inflammation Definitely. that makes you feel better. Yeah. And that's where diet can come in. And then just briefly, I'll talk about this a little bit more later, but for example, I studied omega threes in my PhD. And what's really cool is we have our plant-based omega three, which is ALA, alpha linolenic acid. Nice. So when our body can converts or metabolizes ALA to the more useful omega-3s, which is EPA and DHA, um, we actually produce signaling molecules that are anti-inflammatory. Oh, wow. um, these are like prostaglandins, anti-inflammatory prostaglandins, interleukins, uh, resolvins, and these are signaling molecules that decrease inflammation. They're anti-inflammatory. However, if you consume a lot of omega-6s, um, alpha-linoleic acid, uh, these are found in like canola oil, a lot of mm. um, plant-based oils, not different than avocado and olive oil, but your, mm -hmm. um, ag again, like canola oil, that when that goes through the conversion process to, to be metabolized, it produces pro-inflammatory signaling oh, molecules. Wow. Um, and so again, so diet can affect this, but the gut can too. So through bacteria, you're going to influence the signaling molecules that are going to be either anti or pro-inflammatory, mm -hmm. which is huge. So the third um, pathway, which is very interesting, is we have over like 500 million neurons within our gut, hmm. within our gastrointestinal tract. And these neurons in our gut can communicate directly with the brain. And um, a, the primary way they do this, which you've talked about this quite a bit through your health struggles, you thought mm -hmm. this might be the problem at one point, yeah. was the vagus nerve. Yes. Um, and that's the largest main neuron that's connecting your gut to your brain mm. through this neuronal uh, communication. Yeah. So those kind of those three main pathways in general. Now there are, again, because it's a new field of research, there's a lot that has not been elucidated. And I'm sure right. there's many other pathways out there. But those are kind of, I would say, the three main pathways that we're connecting yeah. our gut to our brain. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully you guys could take in all those words. And <laughs> um, the, the encouraging thing is Dr. Holly has um, agreed to doing some mini episodes yeah, of, definitely. you know, breaking down some of these things. So this is because, again, when I talk with people, 
Um, diet is usually the area that's untapped for yeah. people with mental health. It's like they've tried working out. They've tried counseling. They've tried um, medication. But mm -hmm. it's like they're still eating McDonald's. Exactly. You know, yes. and it, I mean, it just makes such a big difference. So I wanted resources and helping people that they could listen to, you know, that really breaks down this stuff. So if it's a lot to take in, um, we'll go slower one day. But I think yes. that gives a great overview of how your gut and your brain's connecting. Um, now, I think the big question is, now that we know there is a connection, you know, what actually makes a healthy gut? You yes. know, if I'm, okay, I, I believe you, Dr. Holly. Mm -hmm. Now, how can I, as somebody who's an average Joe, um, get a healthy gut. Health gut yes so really quick i wanted to mention one study before i talk yeah. about the healthy yeah, gut yeah. is because it was it's so interesting i think you'll love it it's a study by lee and colleagues that was published in the journal article of stress in 2019 and basically what they did is they had um, mice that had anxiety and depression symptoms and mm -hmm. mice that did not and by transplanting the fecal matter yes the poop yeah. from the depressed mice into the happy happy-go-lucky mice it actually induced depression wow so by transporting the microbiome into another animal it induced depression yeah. so just kind of verifying people who have depression anxiety you do have changes in your gut microbiome wow. the good news is is that it it's, the gut microbiome is plastic. We can change it. We can modulate it. You know, the um, our genes can't, right? So we right. have a genetic, a genetic makeup that's kind of set. We're stuck with it. But the microbiome can be changed. And so that's just some encouragement that... That yeah. could be a mechanism that also improves your mental health. But yeah, I just yeah. wanted to throw that, well, that study out Well, real there. quick, just with that study too, um, again, maybe too much information for some of you guys, but I mean, I know for me and my fecal matter, uh, yeah. the difference between my fecal matter from now to even, you yes. know, a year ago when I was really struggling or two years mm -hmm. ago, I mean, it was horrible. I even got to the point where I was having blood, you know, yeah. on my stool, mm -hmm. um, just from anxiety, depression, you know, they had me do a colonoscopy and a scope and all these different things thinking maybe I had cancer, you know, yeah. in reality, it's I'm anxious. Um, exactly. And so I just think in, I mean, I know for me, it's like nice to have a normal bowel movement. Yes. Um, and so I've just known without having the science, but just the practical, there's been a huge shift. Yeah. And, you know, so a lot of what you've helped me with and um, different things that I've done. So anyways, I know that that doesn't just apply to rats. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then um, how do we yes. get the healthy gut? Okay. So before we go into diet, um, there's a couple things that are just as important in diet. Mm. One is exercise. Exercise mm. is so important for a healthy gut. So the national recommendations for exercise, this is for every average Joe, yes. non-athlete, no athletic background, even for your 50, 60-year-olds out there. Mm. Mm -hmm. 150 minutes of aerobic exercise per week plus two days of resistance training mm -hmm. where you're hitting all major muscle groups. So mm -hmm. this is what's recommended for everybody. Wow. So a lot of people fall short. You have to be intentional. That's not yeah. going to happen naturally, especially if you haven't exercised before. You might have to start slower. But shooting for about you know 30 minutes a day, five mm -hmm. days a week for aerobic exercise and getting some type of resistance training in. Mm -hmm. um, muscle health is huge. And we'll probably talk about that in a future yeah. um, podcast. But you know, muscle is one of the key to successful aging and mm -hmm. um ha you know positive mood and good sleep yeah so exercise is one sleep sleep nice. sleep sleep yeah. sleep is so important if um you ask someone how they're doing and they're saying they're not sleeping well they're probably not doing well yeah and so you're looking for seven to eight hours of sleep seven to eight hours of sleep per day and this needs to be at least 80 percent of the time so if you're having yeah. if you have anxiety don't be having anxiety about not sleeping enough right yeah like, yeah um but just improving in that area yeah and that can be by getting sunlight the first time when you wake up in the morning mm. putting your phones away in the evenings i'm mm. um, just kind of quieting your mind down and we can talk about again ways to sleep better later yeah. but sleep is key three is alcohol the mm. alcohol, I take it away from diet because alcohol is not a nutrient. Alcohol mm. contains calories. Alcohol yeah. is not a nutrient. Right. And alcohol, we know alcohol is used to kill things, right? Rubbing yeah. alcohol kills it. Well, it also kills the bacteria in your gut. Mm. So by drinking alcohol, you're killing the bacteria in your gut. And alcohol is the only drug that if you ask people and they say they don't do it, people think you have a problem. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. It's right. Only drug. People yeah. think you have a problem if you do not do it. Yep. Um, but really alcohol we can talk again maybe later podcast yeah. but there are so many detrimental effects to alcohol by shrinking your brain shrinking your grain of white matter um 
and killing and destroying your gut microbiome. Yeah. So those are the kind of three things I would talk about before um, going into the um, three ways to improve your gut through diet. Cool. Okay. So first thing is going to be probiotics. So, so now, now we're into the the practicals. Yes, practical Those ways. Those are the three things. Yes, these are the, there's three things. Exercise. So exercise, sleep, and diet. diet. Exercise, sleep, um, and diet. And now I'm going to go to have three subcategories of diet that you gotcha. can focus on that are more pra- practical. Okay. So probiotics. So probiotics are going to be something that you're actually consuming the live bacteria. Mm. So you're consuming live bacteria. That can be through supplements or through whole foods. For the most part, we see more benefits when people are consuming whole foods that have probiotics. Mm. I'm a whole food proponent. There are a place for supplements. I take supplements, Mm. but your diet supplements are not going to cure you. If you go buy a fruit and vegetables tablet or a fruit and vegetables powder, it's better than nothing. Mm. But whole foods, you know, low processed, healthy whole foods are going to be the way to go. So here, probiotics in the for, in the form of fermented foods. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be like sauerkraut, fermented um, cabbage. Um, we have kimchi, which is also fermented vegetables, mm-hmm. uh, tempeh, fermented soybeans. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a lot of fermented, you get fermented pickles. They're going to be refrigerated. You know, if a product's fermented, it has to be refrigerated. Mm-hmm. Kombucha is one of my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, sourdough is fermented. So looking yeah. for those fermented foods. And I want to reference one study. So there was a cross-sectional study. That means it's an observational study. Looking at 2,930 individuals in Korea, this was published in the Journal of Nutrition in 2019, and they found that by consuming probiotic foods, that it lowered the severity and prevalence of depression. Wow. They actually found that probiotic food consumption was associated with a 52% reduction in severity of depression and a 41% decrease in the prevalence of depression wow. when you compared the highest consumers to the lowest consumers. Wow. So again, they couldn't identify a specific mechanism behind it, but uh-huh. they know the microbiome microbiome was different between those who were depressed yeah. and not. Um, and that, when you look at the totality of evidence in the literature, fermented foods, um, you can't go wrong with fermented foods. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Well, and I think too, and we could probably talk about this on a later episode, but mm-hmm. um, one thing you're going to be doing in the future too is helping work with you know low income families yeah. um, and people in poverty of how to eat healthy. Mm-hmm. And so if you're listening to this and you turned it off because we're talking about healthy diet and you think it's going to be like we always called whole, whole foods your whole paycheck. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, but it doesn't have to be that no. way. And you know, I mean, m- me and my family are on a low income yeah. ministry income, and I have to eat this way. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, and so there might be some sacrifices of things I don't buy. You mm-hmm. know, so I can eat healthier, Mm -hmm. but don't feel like you have to be rich to do this. Um, You really don't have to be. Yes. And on that point, um, unlike a lot of people, but a lot... (laughs) Unlike a lot of people, but in line with the majority of professionals, I am not a proponent of organic, non-GMO, all of those things. You can wash your foods. If you wash your fruits and vegetables, you can soak them if you want to be extra careful. You can get rid of those pesticides. Mm. Um, And so a lot of people think they have to buy organic or non-GMO to be healthy. Uh, That's simply not the case. So if you know how to prepare your vegetables, if you're concerned about certain waxy vegetables, you can peel them, Mm. but you do not have to buy organic, all natural, all these things. Fun fact, um, if there's the word all natural on a package, there is no definition for all natural. I can put all natural on Oreos. Oh, wow. There's no definition. Anyone can put it on any package, but consumers buy it. Mm. And it's more expensive (laughs) because it says all natural. So just be careful. A lot of these claims, there's little to no regulation. Um, And there are ways, and we can do a podcast, again, on how to consume a healthy diet on a budget because you really can with Mm -hmm. some planning. But, yeah, those fancy foods uh, really aren't needed. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so we went from probiotics, and now uh, we're going to look at prebiotics. Now, prebiotics aren't quite as exciting. So prebiotics are the food for the bacteria. So Mm. it's going to be fiber. Mm -hmm. Now, there's two different types of fiber. There's insoluble and soluble fiber. Mm -hmm. Insoluble fiber is like the stems and the seeds, things that you can't digest. So Mm. it's just going to travel through your colon. It provides bulk. It's been shown to improve colon health. Mm. Um, It helps you stay full longer. But 
that's not as beneficial for the bacteria. Mm -hmm. The soluble fiber, that's like the fiber that's going to form into a gel, like a chia seed, know how it like Mm -hmm. gels up, Mm -hmm. um, or fruit is going to have that soluble fiber. And that's what the bacteria use as food. And they actually ferment it and they produce these short chain fatty acids. Mm. Um, One of the most, there's three of them. One of the ones we talk about the most is... um, butyrate and that actually not only improves the health of the colon it actually signals out to the body and can improve fat metabolism and metabolic health through the signaling of these short chain fatty acids wow but when you look at the prebiotics in the literature there was a systematic review that was published in the international journal of molecular sciences in 2022 it looked at 24 observational studies and then 19 experimental intervention trials where they actually manipulated them and it confirmed that individuals with major depression disorder disorders had changes in the changes in the microbiome which mm. we talked about when compared to healthy people but uh, probiotics improved depression prebiotics did not um, and this kind of holds consistent but what i would mm. say with the thing with prebiotics is it's linked with overall longevity and lower mm. mortality rates mm. so there's a lot of benefits to prebiotics but you kind Prebiotics aren't going to change the composition of your microbiome. It feeds the microbiome you have. Mm. So you kind of need to have that healthy gut and then feed your microbiome the good prebiotics. Mm. But if you have a crappy gut and you just feed it some prebiotics, it's not going to make that much of a difference. It kind of needs to come hand in hand. Like consume your fermented foods with your prebiotics, have a healthy lifestyle, and it can help improve your overall health. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then lastly um, is the supplement option. And I would say with probiotic supplements, yes, but use with caution. Mm. Um, the first thing I would say is there is no regulation with supplements. So the first thing you need to do is it has to be third-party tested. I consume supplements. I would never buy a supplement that's not third-party tested. Mm. There was just a study that came out in 2022 that found the 30 most popular immune-based supplements on Amazon 17 of the 30 did not have the ingredients listed on the label or had contaminants in the product. Wow. 17 of 30. None of them were third-party tested. Mm. Third-party testing doesn't mean the product's safe. It means it actually contains what's on the label, which is sad. Yeah. So if you're going to buy a supplement, it has to be third-party tested. It will say it on the supplement bottle. NSF is common. USP is a common third-party testing agency. Mm -hmm. Or it will just say third-party testing agency. Number one, third-party tested. Two, there are different, everyone has different needs of the different bacterial strands that your microbiome needs. Mm -hmm. So you can do some research if it's through anxiety, if it's women's health, if it's something else, they're all going to be different bacterial strands and you need a certain amount of them to make a difference. Um, But if you consume too much uh, probiotics, it actually causes brain fog. So Mm. it can make it harder to focus, harder to get throughout the day if the dose is too high. So make sure it's been tested, has some type of research backing it up. Um, Hmm. But when I was looking at the literature, I have found quite a few studies that do show a benefit. Uh, One of the most recent ones was a study that was published in the Journal of Gerontology in 2022. And it found that just by consuming probiotic supplements for 12 weeks, promoted mental flexibility and alleviated stress in healthy older adults. And it caused change in the microbiome. Hmm. And one of my favorite things about this study is it increased this molecule called BDNF, which is brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Hmm. And that is what supposedly can improve mood by acting on the brain. The cool oh, wow. thing about this is through exercise of an, through exercise and having healthy muscle, your muscle produces BDNF. Oh, wow. And one of the connections between muscle and brain. Mm. So the gut and brain and muscle and brain may be connecting in similar ways to some yeah. extent. Yeah. Um, so those are kind of my three primary ways, mm-hmm. um, kind of starting at a, you know, fundamental level, how can I increase my gut health, prebiotics, probiotics, and if you want to go to a supplement route, just, just be careful and yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. Well, and I know again, from practical experience, um, I mean, I've probably put on, um, what, 17 pounds, you know, mm-hmm. since, um, I was at my worst, you know, with anxiety, depression and, 
Um, I mean, maybe not all of it's muscle, but yeah. I mean, like most of it's been from working out, eating more food. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I can just tell the more I've put on weight and put on muscle. Um, cause I know some people with anxiety, depression will either gain weight or lose weight. And I was the, you know, losing weight person. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I know there's a, that correlation just from my own life of the more that I have put on muscle. Mm -hmm. I mean, I clearly feel better yeah. and not just, you don't just like look, looking at yourself no. or feel better about the way you look, but just physically, I mean, I feel such a huge difference just putting on, you know, it wasn't a ton of muscle and it was mm -hmm. over, you know, last year, but, um, I mean, yeah, I just know that that makes a big difference Yeah, physically, but, um, so last, what, what, what time we at Wellington? Yeah. So we, so we we got we got a little bit of a, a closing um, yeah. statement here. So um, we'll do we'll do more specifics later. But mm -hmm. um, talking about you know if you were to give a quick rundown mm -hmm. of what is a healthy diet, yeah. you know, and, and how can somebody, um, where can someone start mm -hmm. if they've been convicted by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. here, not only spiritually but physically to improve their health. Um, where where can they start for what is a healthy diet? Okay, so the first thing I say when people ask, what is a healthy diet? A healthy diet is not about the foods that you exclude. It's about mm. the foods that you include. Mm. And I think that's where a lot of diets get it wrong. It's about you can't eat this, you can't eat that, you can't eat this. And people are so overwhelmed and feel so restricted, yeah. um, they fall off the bandwagon in a couple of weeks or a couple months. Mm. Um, and so it's about the foods you're including. If you focus on good foods to include, you're not going to have to worry as much as about the foods to exclude. Right. Um, when you're looking at foods to include that are important, um, low processed foods are going to be the best. Our ultra mm. processed foods like fast foods and chips and things like that they contain a lot of the nutrients that aren't great for us so we have like added sugars mm -hmm. sodium saturated fat and trans fats that are all going to be promoting inflammation promoting weight gain metabolic dysregulation mm -hmm. not great for the brain yeah um, the other big thing is fruits and vegetables, right? Yeah. Eat your fruits and vegetables. They do not need to be organic. Do mm -hmm. not need to be organic. Um, and half your plate, half your plate fruits and vegetables um, is great. Lean proteins are important. You can do this in an animal, animal based way or a plant based way. It's up to mm -hmm. you. If you like to eat a vegetarian type diet, um, you can go to high, uh, healthy uh, pea proteins are great. Soybeans are great for a more animal based. I'm a, more of an animal based girl. Yeah. So like beef. Beef has so many nutrients in it. Beef, pork, chicken, fish. So fish are kind of like a superfood. They're mm. going to have those omega-3 fatty acids, EPA and DHA, which again, if you remember, that helps decrease inflammation. Right. And the cool thing about EPA and DHA, it actually gets incorporated into your cells and takes out the more inflammatory lipids. Mm. And then it makes your cell membranes more fluid and your cells are able to communicate better and signal better because this actually incorporates incorporates into your body mm, which is kind wow. of a cool concept i yeah. think you know i'm eating fish or the one of the supplements i take are omega-3s and by uh -huh. taking omega-3s i'm actually changing the composition of my own body cells and the fluidity of my body cells wow which yeah. is kind of cool yeah no absolutely um, yeah so high quality protein if it's plant or animal based um high you know fruits and vegetable intake i mean those are the really big things in low processed foods yeah and eating in moderation you don't have to stuff yourself try to get away from the good food bad food thing yeah. you can have a cookie and it's not going to hurt your health right yeah. for most people as long as you're not having any intolerances yeah. you can have a cookie as a part of a balanced diet working out and you're completely fine. Don't have guilt. Don't have anxiety. Yeah. Um, just enjoy your food and yeah. don't worry about everything you can't have and focus on the foods that you can have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I, I mean, I like, again, how simple that is. Yeah. And when you look at, again, we, we've been created by God and he's given us specific design. And when you look at, I mean, even a hundred years ago, but especially, you know, a thousand years ago, yeah. I mean, what people w were eating mm -hmm. is just what you're talking about. Yeah. Not processed food, f catching fish, yeah. <laughs> killing a cow. I mean, <laughs> it's like, you know, having their gardens. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's not, I think we can be like, oh man, we have to go on this crazy fad diet. And it's like, no. well, or just like plant a little garden, yeah. you know, yeah. um, go buy a, some beef from your local 
farmer uh, really? or from Walmart, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I just know, again, for me, getting away from the process mm-hmm. stuff. And what would you say to, and maybe you don't have time to get into all this, but if you do, give you can give an answer. Mm-hmm. But I know, like, when I've eaten beef from a local farmer, yeah. um, I feel like it's way better on my stomach. Mm-hmm. When I eat even vegetables from Grandpa's Garden, yeah. way better on my stomach than, mm-hmm. you know, Walmart. You know, why is that? Or... Um, is that just mainly from the process or like you said earlier, mm-hmm. maybe not soaking your vegetables yeah. and stuff? Cause I've heard that from different people. Mm-hmm. It's like when you go natural, even though you don't have to, yes. it does seem like mm-hmm. it's easier yeah. on your gut. Yeah. And I would say for meat, if I was going to choose an area of my life to go a more like holistic approach, it uh-huh. would be with meat Yeah. Um, because you know, your free range grass fed beef or even like chicken mm-hmm. or eight eggs, mm-hmm. they a- actually changes the composition of the nutrients. Uh-huh. So like grass fed beef has high omega three fatty acid content. Mm. And we just talked about, you yeah. know, omega threes help reduce inflammation. Um, yeah. It can have less saturated fat depending on the cut that you get. It can, you know, just be leaner, a healthier animal. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that can definitely have a difference. Even yeah. with eggs, uh, chickens that are fed omega Omega threes have a high composition of omega threes in their eggs. You mm. know, it just translates over. Yeah. Um, and then with vegetables, I think with vegetables, it uh, the big part is how you're preparing them. Yeah. Preparation. So you know, soaking those vegetables, um, peeling them. If it's a waxy, so your vegetables with a waxy layer, they're actually able to absorb the pesticides more. Oh, so wow. things like cucumbers. Uh-huh. Um, if you don't want to, if you're not wanting to buy organic, by peeling the cucumber, you're definitely not going to have any pesticides. So yeah. anything that you peel, you're really wasting your money by buying organic because uh-huh. you're simply by peeling that off, you're peeling off any pesticides yeah. that it might be. Gotcha. But yeah, soaking and prop- proper preparation. Would um, be the big one. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Well, um, I feel like we covered yeah, a lot. That definitely. was good. That was an exciting episode of getting to see spiritual transformation mm-hmm. and just those practical struggles we can deal with, with athletics, with anxiety, depression, um, our identity, eating disorders, addictions, all that kind of stuff. But then also, you know, th- that God has made our body um, to be healthy. Yeah. And it's not about, you know, the Bible says physical um, exercise profits a little, but exercise yourself towards godliness. So it's not about worshiping the body, but I mean, I think God wants us to feel good if we can, mm-hmm. you know, and we can get sick and bad things can happen and that can be in within the will of God, but mm-hmm. there's no reason to trash the temple. Exactly. You know, he's given us for no reason. Um, and so if you want to have more energy to do the ministry or mm-hmm. to be there for your family or to do well at work, um, I mean, eating well, Mm-hmm. It's a good place to start. Yes. So um, we appreciate you being on, Aubrey. I, I don't know if um, Wellington, you got you got the last closing thoughts for us. I mean, I would say uh, it's really important to take serious uh, eating because the older you get, yeah. yes. the worse you probably get. You know, now I feel good. I'm younger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like I can eat anything. Like for real, I can. I feel like I can eat anything. Goes downhill at thirty. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. And then the future is like, yep, you know, you're gonna regret. So it's like, you know, it's good to learn uh, this stuff because it's serious, you know. And it just take a little bit of discipline and stuff like that. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, Aubrey. Any last, any last comments from you? Uh, no, just the, oops. But yeah, just thanks for having me and. Um, yeah, you I'll plug it in. Okay, yeah. Just thanks for having me, and I enjoyed it, and I look forward to having yeah future podcasts. If you have any questions, you can message Luke, and I'll I'll answer them. Yeah, cool, sweet. Well, we'll uh, we'll do some like I said, some mini mini episodes. We've got our mini episodes going through the Bible, um, Genesis to Revelation. We're still in Genesis, um, and then yeah, we'll have some mini episodes on just some diet um, advice. And again, you can send in questions on our website at www.52ministries.org. Topics, yeah. um, topics anything that you want to um, talk about, you can drop them in the comment section. Um, you can email us at uh, narrowgatemissions at gmail.com. Um, so yeah, just get a hold of us if you have any questions on diet, but we'll be, we'll be putting out some, some mini episodes to help the practical things. Cause, um, I need them too. <laughs> now, now, now that I can, uh, now that I can eat more things and my health's yes. improving, um, I'm wanting to, yeah, get a little bit more diverse in my diet. So appreciate you guys being with us and God bless you. And we'll, um, yeah, be back with another episode soon.